I love sharing the gospel, evangelism, and just kind of uh, uh, come alive, I guess you'd say, even more so, uh, whether it's going on a mission trip or an outreach or uh, just mission trips and all those things, coming together with the body of Christ and just going forward on a mission for the Lord and just excited so. Uh, this morning, where my I? Uh, Andy, Andy frame I'm going to be uh, going through uh, missions. I'm going to talk about missions this morning. Uh, a couple of times I've talked about discipleship, outreach, and talking about missions this morning. Uh, kind of our some of our core values. I think they're called uh, discipleship, outreach, missions. And next time will be the E on dome, evangelism, and then uh, worship and prayer. And so we have these also hung up at the uh, uh, training center on Ogden Avenue. So missions. This is actually a picture. Some of you may have seen Pastor Gloria's show. We went to Africa. This one is actually 2019. And uh, I believe some of you know Mark and Rebecca Brandt. So, uh, Chuck, uh, I might as well go ahead and introduce the rest of them. Chuck Kaminka, I met going through uh, on uh, trips to New Orleans. So, he was, I met him going through trips. And uh, he's, I think he's living in Texas now. This is uh, missionary Wendy Lane in the red. Um, she's calls this her home base, but now she's she was in Alaska for a year or two last year, but uh, she's in uh, she's a women's director of a team challenge in New Mexico. Thanks, New Mexico. And then on the far left, this is Val. We met her. Well, we know her through really good friends, and then myself and my wife and Pastor Glory. So this is the backdrop of one of the ho the hotel we stayed at, and. Uh, Hotel was a blessing, but uh, they had some um, weddings. They had weddings or something, receptions at, outside, and so they played loud music, and it was hard to get to sleep sometimes, but we had nerd for the Lord. And they would have, we, I went out there to try to see what was going on one time. And uh, outside of the missionary house, they had, you know, I'm saying the hotel, they had a reception, and uh, they, they asked me if they wanted, if I wanted to have cake. I said, well, let me see this cake. I gotta investigate this cake. <laughs> And I thought it'd be like your traditional cake that we're uh, accustomed to here in America. But lo and behold, I arrive and I see a uh, butchered goat. It's just a, a goat just hanging out there. They call it, you know what they call it? They call it goat cake. They just call it goat cake. They love their goat there. And they have that instead of uh, what we call the, our word for sugar there is sukari. In Swahili, it's uh, sukari, it's sugar. sugar. We, they didn't have sugar cake. They had meat. They like their meat goat cake. So, so anyways, a little backdrop for that trip. Lord willing, I'll remember to share some testimonies. Um, I'm going to pray. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for this time together. I, uh, I just pray that you continue just to go before us uh, during the service. And Lord God, you just give us a hunger and passion for people and souls. Lord God, give us a burden for the lost. Lord God, in our home city first, Lord God, give us a burden uh, for the lost that are, that are dying, they're perishing without a Savior. And just give us a burden, Lord God, for uh, the nations, Lord God. It says in Psalm 2.8, the psalmist wrote, uh, Ask of me, and I'll give you the nations. It says, I'll give you the, in King James, the heathen as your inheritance. And so we're praying, Lord God, for, that you just give us uh, just, just this burden, just this, uh, just this desire to see people saved, Lord God. To see them come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. To, to be able to hear and respond to the gospel. There's still unreached people groups, Lord God. There's still people in other countries and other nations that haven't heard the gospel. But there's also, uh, the, I believe it, it's, it's kind of shifted in America. Uh, we used to be uh, sending out more and more missionaries, which we are. But I believe America is a mission field as well. It always has been. But we need people to come here. We need to continue to go. We need to be a people that, that gets equipped, that gets uh, uh, encouraged, gets built up. And uh, that we are sent out. We're equipped, we're empowered, and then we're also sent out into the lost and dying, Lord God. Give, I pray, Lord God. I pray that you just give us your heart, Lord God, for people. You just give us, give us your eyes, Lord God. It says when you looked at the multitudes in Matthew 9 and, and the Gospel of Luke, it says that you are moved with compassion. I just pray that that compassion, Lord God, would just propel us, Lord God, propel us to seek your face, to have your heart. And to be moved, Lord God. When, we, when you tell us to move, that will move. When you tell us to wait, we'll wait. 
But Lord, help us above all to be obedient to our part in this great commission that you've given us, Lord God. You've given your people, the bride of Christ, uh, the, sons and, the, the sons and daughters, Lord God, this great commission to fulfill. And help us all to do our part, Lord God. Praying, giving, supporting, going, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord God, this morning that you would just continue just to do something amazing in our hearts. Even, even right now, maybe this morning, even right now in prayer, or, or maybe during the message, that uh, somebody will be even loud and clear. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll give them just a burden or, or a nation or a place or a city in our hometown. Remember that uh, you are faithful to do that. You are faithful to do that, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Um, well, I was praying. I just remember uh, my brother here in the front row, Kenny. Uh, Pastor Kenny, he was, uh, uh, I don't remember how the, the story goes, but you, uh, you, had, a, you had a burden for uh, Maine. The Lord gave you a burden for Maine at some point, right? Uh, okay. I, I, I went. I went with. Okay. Yeah, well, well Pastor Nick, you had a burden for Maine. And so Kenny said yes. And uh, there was four of them that went on a, a by car. I think it was Dave Rosu. Yeah. Pastor Nick, Pastor Kenny, was it Josiah? Josiah. All right. I got the four, right? And so they just, uh, they didn't know who they were going to talk to. They had a date, they had a car, they had some gas, and uh, they hopped in the car, and, and, and they drove out. And uh, there were circumstances that happened where uh, Kenny was just able to minister to this gentleman in just a tremendous way. And uh, they were able to pray for people and minister to people, and, and uh, they drove all the way back. They said, what, 40 some hours, approximately, what, 30 or? Five food rations. Oh, you yeah. Yeah. Was it approximately the fly out? I mean the drive out? Yeah, twenty some thirty hours, yeah. Yeah, thirty hours. And um, just just uh this is the obedience to hear the call of God and to go. And uh, I think God always always honors obedience. Uh, I'm just gonna break into this intro. It says a missionary in the broadest sense, a missionary, talk about missions, talk about missionaries. Missionary in the broadest sense is one who is sent. A Christian is a person who is sent. And we heard recently that uh, John, excuse me, Pastors John and Colleen Smith, uh, we heard from them in their missionary work. And I believe, was it Guatemala and Belize? Belize. Belize, thank you. Uh, they they talk, heard about their tremendous work that they're doing there. We hear their amazing uh, testimonies, how they're coming alongside the churches to equip the churches and equip and encourage the local church there because uh, they're, they're just doing incredible works. And we heard these amazing testimonies how God's supplying above and beyond their needs. And, and uh, so a missionary is one who has sent. Uh, a missionary can go for uh, an extended period of time. Uh, they can go for uh, years or you can go for uh, shorter periods of time as well. Um, I've I haven't been on a really long trip, but I think the longest trip I've been on is maybe two weeks. Um, shorter mission trips. Um, but we can support others that are going for longer periods of time and doing sustained uh, missionary work. And uh, when I think of uh, missionaries, Johnny Klein Smith, I think of missionaries, I think that I shows a commitment. Commitment. They are, they are committed to what they're doing. They are very committed. Uh, and they they display commitment. I think as believers, as Christians, that whether we're missionaries or or supporting in different ways, or as believers, the Lord wants us to have uh, commitment, commitment. And uh, they know that they're going that as missionaries are going to be sent, and uh, they're going to to share the gospel, and they're going to uh, by faith they're going to see lives changed, lives changed. And uh, I wrote down here missionaries. As we're sent, as you're sent, as others are, I firmly believe that missionaries are sent with power. I mean, is there, does it seem there's a person back there? But Acts 1 8, it says, uh, Missionaries are sent with power. And this may be familiar, but I'm going to read Acts 1 8. It says that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and all of Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so we, I, I, if you want to uh, join us, it's not too late. We're going through the New Testament and a Bible plan. It's just on the uh, uh, smartphone, and uh, it's not a very long read. But anyway, I say that to say that we're going through the book of Acts right now. And the book of Acts is 
definitely top five, one of my favorite books in the Bible. Acts is a book of action, the disciples going forward, and a demonstration of the Holy Spirit power that was operating then and is still operating right now through believers. The Holy Spirit power is still operating through believers to heal the sick, to cast out devils, and uh, to pray for healing. To pray for healing. There's so many examples as we're reading through the book of Acts right now. That uh, Acts 8, let me think of Acts 8. Uh, can you put Acts 4 up there, brother, please? Acts 8, 4. Acts 8, 4. Uh, uh, Philip. He's going, uh, he's going through the city. He's, he's one of the people that's called Philip the Evangelist. And he's going through, he's going through town to town, city to city. And uh, so it says he's, he's preaching the, the word everywhere he went. And so things are happening. Uh, literally, uh, people are hearing the gospel. The gospel is being proclaimed, and it says afterwards, and uh, I believe 7 and 8, 8, uh, 7 and 8, it says, after these things are happening, it says that there is great joy in the city. There's great joy in the city. There's, there's amazing joy. Uh, yeah, thank you, verse 8. And so I, I work at Teen Challenge, and Pastor Kenny has, and Pastor Nick does currently, and, and uh, it's amazing to see. I'm talking about great joy in the city because there's deliverance, there's healing. I believe that there's families getting restored. And so I'm, I'm often reminded of a place called Teen Challenge where uh, gentlemen, you know, getting their lives restored. They're getting free from bondages, addictions. And uh, there's great joy in the city. I mean, I'm, I'm referring now to there's great joy in the families. Great joy in the families of those cities getting restored and built up and, and uh, deliverance. And so it's joyful. It is. I don't know. I, I heard that word from a little while back. I like the word joyful. It's joyful when uh, somebody is, is, uh, is free from addiction. They're free from bondage. They're free from depression. And it's, it's joyful. It's exciting. I remember I was, I was, before I was a Christian, I was bound up with depression. Uh, I, I believe, looking backward hindsight, I believe it was the enemy, uh, you know, whispering voices to me, saying he was whispering lies. The enemy whispers lies, saying that I was no good, and saying that I was worthless. I'm just saying, before, before Jesus, I'm just testifying that before the Lord... When I was 15, 16, 17 years old, those, those ages that AJ talked about where it's a crucial time to reach them, where um, the enemy was just, just pummeling me with lies and just attacking my identity. And uh, I, was, I was to the point where I was about to end my life and about to take my life. Then I cried out to the Lord, and he heard me. He cried out to, I cried out to the Lord. I said, God, if you're real, I need to know. And uh, the Lord, in a still, small voice, uh, said, I'm real. And so... Um, I say that to say that there was great joy. I, I found great joy after the Lord uh, demonstrated his love toward me. And, uh, you know, and he, came, he himself came, you know, to, and spoke to me directly. And so great joy in the city. As the word goes forth, there's healing, deliverance on the mission field. Um, and Christians, disciples, we are sent with a message to share. We are sent with a message to share, I believe, as... Uh, Isaiah, if I can share about you, you went on a trip called Action Corps, right? And you were doing things, you were building, and, and oftentimes, as we build things, as we do what's called uh, meet practical needs, that opens people's heart to the gospel uh, as well. And so we, we can do practical things, we can, we can share, we can uh, help uh, uh, raise a church, we can help do those practical things. I remember uh, Pastor John Kelly and Smith had talked about practical things as far as they're giving away blankets, a practical thing that people need. It's hard for somebody to listen to the gospel when their bellies are empty sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It's when their bellies are empty and they, can't, they haven't had a drink of water in how long. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay. It's practical. It's good to feed them. And then you can uh, share the word with them as well. And so praise the Lord for that we are sent with a message to share. The gospel is still good news. The gospel is still good news. It's still setting the captives free. It's still... Uh, being shared intentionally and deliberately as we share it, um, there's always, I believe, two responses. Some will believe and some will believe not, but it's our um, responsibility to share. It's our responsibility to share what the Lord is doing in our life, to testify, but also to share the gospel that Jesus Christ uh, came to die for us. Uh, he defeated death on the third day, and excuse me, on the third day he rose again. And so, I have here in John 20, 21, talking about he sends us with power. He sends us with good news. John 20, 21. It says, so Jesus said to them, peace to you as the Father has sent me. 
I also send you. He said, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. Uh, remember John, uh, excuse me, in the Gospels, in the gospels he was, uh, the, Lord, the Lord was baptized in water and baptized with the Holy Ghost, and he was led to the desert, attempted, and then he went out and did miracles and signs. And so I find confidence, personally, I personally find confidence that the Lord says, as I sent, as Jesus was sent, and so I'm sending you, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you, in the same way he was sent, we are being sent in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the power of the Holy Spirit, if we, if we continue not just to, if we get that in our head, we get that in our thoughts, we get that in our, in our, in our brain, in our, in our heart, that uh, there doesn't, it, there's nothing that's going to stop us in the Lord's might, but not, not in our strength, but that we go out. We go out in the power of the Lord, and uh, Amen. we go out in the Lord's power, in the power of of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4, 6 says, Not by my mind, not by my power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. you got to go out of the power of the Holy Spirit. If you don't, I, I believe that uh, it, it, could, it could be, I'm just saying, uh, uh, parentheses, it could be, the, the demon said one time, Hey, Paul, we know, and we know this, but, but who are you? But, but uh, as, as we are children of the Lord, as we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we have confidence in this. We have confidence in these things that the Lord is with us. And I, I looked at one of the words in the Greek for send. It says here in Greek, it means to dispatch. It means in an orderly motion to send out properly on a mission. We are getting sent out properly on a mission. And also we're getting sent with power and we're getting sent <coughs> with purpose. We're getting sent with purpose. Uh, it says in Proverbs 25, 25. As cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. As cold water to a weary soul, so is good news. <laughs> Bless you. From a far country. Good news is encouraging. Yes, you know, it, is. it is. Good news is encouraging. We get enough bad news, we get enough bad news in the world, and the enemy, the devil, and all these things. And But I'm talking about uh, you're, you're from, you're, you're working, just say practically, you're, you're working, let's say, uh, a mission, or you're, you're working in a church, and, and you have people come help you practically. It, it's encouraging to get help for people to come alongside you and walk beside you and, and give you advice, give you wisdom, give you, give you counsel. It's encouraging, and, and uh, there's times where we've uh, been to Africa a few times, and, and we look to see how can we be a blessing to you. Those are the kind of questions we want to ask when we go to uh, another city, another uh, place, another country. How can we be a blessing to you? We want to encourage you. Is there something that you want to learn? Is there something that you want us to bring practically? Is there a certain message? Is there a certain message? And and uh, last time we went to Africa, and the Lord uh, said to uh, have a leadership conference. So myself, uh, Chuck and Minky, and Wendy Lane, we we did uh, a triple tag team message on different aspects of leadership there uh, for the people uh, we minister to. And also, sometimes they'll ask us uh, to bring a message or they'll bring maybe your practical things. We're, oh man, Mark Grant had me working hard. I'm not used to being a uh, physical labor, brother. I'm not used to that. I'm just not built for that. Not yet, anyway. So practically speaking, we're in the mission field in Africa, right here in uh, Moshe, Tanzania. And uh, uh, someday I'll get a picture up there, but they were actually literally building walls. Like, uh, I'm like talking about from the, like the dirt up. Like, uh, they have a, a campus, like a, a, what do you call it, a property. And they really enforced having, like, like structured walls around their, their ministries and around their, their property, I'm saying. And so, they're getting started from the, like, literally from the dirt. And so, uh, me and Mark Grant and a few of the locals, uh, we're digging a trench, basically. So we're, they, don't, they didn't have the big machines, you know, the concrete, uh, was it, what's that? The big concrete things where you just pour the concrete. They don't, they don't have that available. And so we're, we're, this, is, this is really some intense labor that I'm just not used to anyway. So, and so literally we're, I was just saying, this is actually the soil. We're, we're digging a trench about 20 some inches wide. And then we they got a straight line this way, they got a straight line all the way down the whole side. And, and so we're digging, and then all of a sudden, after we dig, uh, we got to put these rocks in there. So we're putting rocks and organizing rocks in there and moving all these rocks. They have a load of rocks there and put them in there by hand. And, 
And so, uh, I said, you say it was, it was helpful for them, you know, it was encouraging for them because they have to get a wallop. And so somebody else, we, we helped lay the foundation down there, and somebody else came and, and poured walls and put walls up. So uh, there's practical things we can do as missionaries to help, uh, to come alongside uh, the local churches there, uh, whether it's Africa, or let that as, as an example because I've been there, and also uh, uh, Mexico when the, the trips were going there uh, to Mexico as well. Um, where did I go? So we are sent with power, and we are sent with purpose. And as Christian believers, uh, we, are, we have a, a powerful message that we don't have to hide, that we don't have to, uh, uh, we, we, can, we can share it uh, with boldness, with humility and confidence, because this is an important message that we, that we share. And as missionaries and as a ministry, it's important to be outward focused. It's important to have a focus on outside of our four walls. We need to have uh, a purpose and it, and it has to be outside and bigger than ourselves. Uh, we just don't want to attain something that we can do. We want to believe God for uh, a bigger purpose. We want to believe God that he'll take us uh, to new places. Because uh, it's a walk of faith. This is the walk of faith uh, where, where we go and the, and the places that we minister to. And um, it's a walk of faith, and where God guides, He uh, provides. I'm sure you've heard this before, but it's, I've seen it so many times. So many times. Uh, I remember we were taking a trip to New Orleans, maybe the, I think it's our third year going, and uh, we're driving out of the driveway of the, of the church, and there's a van just cruising down. He's waving me down, waving me down, and I'm like, what's going on? And so I, I pull over, and he pulls up alongside me, and, and uh, he gives us some gas money. He gives us cash to to use for the uh, trip down there. And so, uh, just so many ways that that had happened uh, to provide. And so, every missionary trip that we have taken, and, and God has provided for every person every time. Every person every time. So, once you know that you're supposed to go, like, for sure, I firmly believe that God will uh, meet your faith where it's at, and God will provide. Um, I think it was Alaska last uh, October, God provided for people, and um, I remember even just, you know, so many trips. Excuse me, so many ways that in, in, in unique ways to the New Orleans trips where uh, there's one person that paid for like a whole another person's trip that they wanted. They felt like they were supposed to do that. They paid for the whole trip, and at that, at that time it was four hundred dollars uh, to go that we had made, and so they paid for the whole trip. But God uh, provides as He leads, as He directs, He provides. Um, so praise the Lord. I'm going to look at just, uh, where are we at here? All right. Let's get my bearings. Um, sometimes you got to get your bearings, brother. You got to <laughs> recalculate. All right. I'm going to look just briefly at uh, the book of Acts, chapter 13. This is looking at uh, the Apostle Paul's uh, first missionary journey. We can look, we can learn continually. We got so much to learn from the book of Acts. Acts 13, I'm going to look at verse 1. All right, we're going to have to leave me, Lord. All right, Acts 13, we're looking at uh, the Apostle Paul. We're going to look at, this is just a great couple of verses here. We're looking at first, verses 1 through 3. It says, Now the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. And verse 2, it says here, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work of the Lord to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So we see here um, that they were gathered together. The church was praying together. They were seeking the Lord's face. They were worshiping. They were praying. And then, out of a time of worship and prayer, then the Lord spoke to them. This can be uh, for individual lives, for things that God has called us to. 
But also, as, uh, as, as, we're, as we're waiting upon the Lord, we're praying, we're worshiping, and then the Holy Spirit will speak to us uh, about missions or about different things in our lives. And so the Holy Spirit spoke. And so it's as we seek the Lord's face that he will direct our steps. Amen. And um, I remember it was, uh, I think it was approximately 2018, and you know, we're kind of getting ready, and we are kind of in the praying stages about possibly going to Africa, and, and in 2018, it's like, uh, everywhere I took, everywhere I was looking, I would, God would just hit me over the head with uh, a confirmation to go, you know, was, I was taking the Teen Challenge guys to a Wednesday night service, which I always didn't do, and, um, and uh, the pastor is speaking, and, and um, they don't always speak, and, and at this time, I mean, and, and he starts, he gets this, this uh, paper out, he's talking about Africa, and missionaries in Africa, and and all these different things about going to Africa, and, and, uh, and so all these different ways that God would confirm it to go, and so uh, God can do that. God can confirm things, and uh, He can confirm direction. I remember uh, Gideon. You know, He is. If we look back, He laid a fleece out before the Lord, and and then He did the reverse. And so God will confirm uh, what what He wants you to do if that's needed as well. So sent. Um, Let's see here. Praise the Lord. Uh, the Apostle Paul is documented here for three uh, missionary journeys. And I'm going to look at Acts 13. We're going to look at mostly his first one here first. Acts 13, verse 4. And so it says, So being sent out, by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Cilicia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they had arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they also had John as their assistant. So we mentioned earlier, and the scripture says here, that they were sent out by the Holy Spirit. They were sent out with power. They were sent out with the power of the Spirit. And when they arrived, um, they preached the word of God. They preached. And I'm going to go over in the same chapter, Acts 13, uh, verse 13. It says, Now when Paul and his party set sail from Paphos, they came to uh, Perga and Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem, but when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. So the leadership there is saying, if you have a word for us, you have the freedom to go and share that. So... I got to believe that the Apostle Paul, he said, because he, he wrote later to uh, Timothy, says, be prepared in season and out of season. So he, he takes full advantage of this time. He goes and, and uh, gives a detailed account here, uh, and, uh, following this right here, a uh, detailed account of the history, the law, and continues to share the gospel. Uh, I'm going to highlight a couple of things that he shares here as he's sharing with the people. Um, he says, after, in verse 24, he's going to, uh, share a few uh, spots. Uh, John the Baptist and his coming baptism of repentance uh, to all the people of Israel. And then, um, let's see over here. Verse 30, another key verse, I believe. But God raised him from the dead. He was seen for many days by those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses to the people. And we declare to you glad tidings that promise which was made to the fathers. God had fulfilled this for their children that he has raised up Jesus from the dead. And um, verse 38, Paul continue, continues. He's got this long discourse here recorded. Paul says, uh, therefore let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. And at the end of this discourse in Acts 13, I'm going to go to verse 47. 
It says, For the, so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Now when the Gentiles heard this, okay, here's one response when they heard, when they heard, when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and they glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as have been appointed to eternal life, they believe. Okay, so you have people responding and believing. But verse 49, and the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city. They raised up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and they expelled them from the region. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium. And the disciples, it says that they were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. And so they, they didn't take it personal. They, they, they didn't take it personal. That, but I, they, they rejoiced that they were persecuted for Jesus' sake. They were filled with joy. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, they continued uh, to, to go forward as the Lord led them. But, but as we share, we have a responsibility to speak and to share. And, and uh, there's going to be a couple responses. They may believe and or they may, they may stir it up. They may stir things up in a negative way. And uh, we're going to look at... Um, I think we'll look at second, Paul's second journey another time. I'm going to go over here to... Uh, there's a quote here from... I'm going to try to pronounce this gentleman's name. Mark Statura. He says, The mark of a great church is not its seating capacity... But he says, but it's sending capacity. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a great church. It's not how many people you can put in the chairs, but how many people are going to be sent out to proclaim the good news? Amen. I'm out there reminded of uh, Reinhard Bonnke. Have you ever heard of Reinhard Bonnke? He's got really incredible teachings on, on YouTube, and uh, he's passed away now. But one of my favorite ones uh, I, I like sharing often is the one called Lost at Sea. And it gives, it's basically a parable, but it, it's, it's in a visual, it's a, it's a, it's a video. And um, Reinhard Bonnke has this incredible video where, uh, and so there's basically a big cruise ship, a big cruise ship. And uh, these people are having, they're getting ready to have this, this uh, uh, immaculate dinner. They got, their, they got their suits on inside this cruise ship, you know, and they're all Christians. and. They're talking about how to, to catch a, a fish, you know, or go fishing. And you said, you don't, you don't approach this way, and so they're, you approach this way, and you don't use this kind of things. And so they're talking about all these ways uh, to go fishing for men or to, or to go rescue. Or actually, they're talking about how to rescue somebody, you know, how to rescue somebody. And so all of a sudden, they get this distress call. And so uh, they get this distress call from the cruise ship and from the, the uh, I'm not sure what that position is called, but uh, somebody hears that there's... Uh, a boat going down in the, in the, in the water and, and they say, we need all, everybody, we need all hands on deck. They said, we need all hands on deck. And, and so they, they, they tell the, the, the cruise ship that we need all, everybody that's possible to help, to help out with this mission to, to, in and, and, and this ocean. The, the, rain, the waves are, are beating down and, and they have, it says they have the ship amongst all ships. They have all these lifeboats. And I think he goes to the party and, and they get about maybe seven people or something to respond out of all the people on the cruise ship and and the person, they got a couple of boats out, and, and the person is just furious on their end. He's like, what? You have all these people, all these resources. We need, these, these people are going to perish without your help and not without your assistance. And so this is the parable that he displays. It's incredible for me as, as, uh, as there's so many lost people. He says, uh, the workers, this is the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And, and I, I got to see that the Lord is bringing together an army of people here. Uh, in, in this fellowship is bringing a group together uh, to seek and save the lost uh, in our neighborhood, you know, whether it's a barbecue coming up or whatever it looks like. Uh, but it's, it's definitely for this great commission that the Lord Jesus, he's given us. Yeah. The Lord himself has given us a commission, a command, uh, and it's something that we get to do with joy. But I think it helps, I was telling like, the, the men at TC, I taught them recently, uh, that we had to have an eternal mindset that this is going to go on forever and ever. One time, I think Pastor Nick talked about a, 
If you can get a line here, across there, and anyway, this eternal mindset of eternity and eternity forever and ever, that we can uh, think about others and uh, how we can look outside ourselves and look, uh, get out of our comfort zone for the sake of the lost and for the sake uh, of the lost and the broken. Um, just a few more things I want to share. It says, uh, uh, this has always been relevant and prevalent, prevalent. Prevalent uh, when I've gone myself and when others have gone. When you go, you grow. When you go, whether it's uh, Mission Corps or, or other things, you are going to grow, I believe, in leaps and bounds. This is one of the ways that the Christian, I personally believe, in my opinion, uh, this is one of the ways that a Christian can uh, add, uh, I call, spiritual miracle grow to your walk with the Lord. I'm not good with plant, planting plants, but I really believe this. This uh, catapults one's faith. It catapults your uh, belief in God's word. Just to see things uh, happen as you are sent. When you go, you grow because you're out of your comfort zone. You get out of your comfort zone. You're, you're fully relying upon and depending upon uh, the Lord. And so uh, just to, uh, uh, just to uh, I, you know, especially going to a brand new place. The Lord's been everywhere. He is everywhere. And so he's already going before you as you pray, as you, as you go forward. And uh, we went to uh, Alaska in October, this past October, and I've never been there and I've never spoken to anybody, but you're depending upon the Lord. And when you go, uh, people, you go with an expectancy that God is going to move in a mighty way. You go, it's go, you go with an expectancy. You go with an expectancy that you're, that you're going to see, uh, whether it's deliverance or miracles, that the word is going to go forth. And uh, actually, I just got a message, uh, I mean, recently from, uh, I think it was Jeremy also. Jeremy up in, uh, I forget the ministry, not the team challenge, but the one with the house. Uh, yeah, life changers, thanks, brother. Life changers. He sent me a message, and he said, you know, our, our, we are still excited from when you guys came up here and team challenge, excuse me, up with life changers. And, and uh, we're, we're still, uh, you know, uh, they're still, what do you say, that their lives are still impacted by us going up there, the whole team. The whole team played a part, and everybody got to minister and be ministered to. Uh, just think right now in Alaska, uh, Pastor Nick's uh, other son, Sam, um, uh, we were ministering to uh, this, the homeless people uh, in one of these places, and uh, Sam just begins to start crying and just to see, um, you know, the people that are homeless and without a home, and he just begins to weep, his heart is touched, and uh, Pastor Kenny's uh, son as well is getting touched in different ways there. And so we, we grow as a people. Our heart gets touched as we uh, grow. And I've just seen, you know, countless people step out in faith. You know, they're uh, maybe unsure when they, whether it's get on the bus or get on the plane uh, to a place that they've never been. And, and it's just exciting to see people uh, trusting the Lord. And trusting the Lord, Amen. As we go, we go with an expectation. And, and uh, I do encourage, I, I'll give you the challenge. If you've never been to a third world country or the missionary trip, I, I, I'm laying out the, this challenge. I'm, I'm rolling it out to you. Just pray about it at some point. And uh, if you don't, that's, uh, pray about supporting others that can. Pray about it. Because it does. It, it changes your, your heart. It changes your life. And just, uh, for me, I just, uh, just poured on so much gratitude uh, for the things that are available to us here. And, but if you can't, there's so many missionaries to support financially, and the prayer is so important. But I also believe that there's, um, however, there's uh, specific groups, even of local missionaries, like the college campuses, uh, UWS and other missionaries. There's missionaries to college campuses. There's missionaries to uh, different uh, specific areas, and whether it's college ministries or um, so whether it's uh, m uh, missionaries to, to different faiths, Muslims or different uh, faith as well. So really it's uh, praying and the Lord giving you a burden, the Lord uh, preparing you and um, praise the Lord. Just looking at a couple of notes here. I'm going to read. Have you all heard about uh, have you all heard about the Moravian missionaries? Yes, yeah. I'm just going to read uh, from an article here talking about these uh, Moravian missionaries. So 
We're going to find a spot we're going to catch up at. One moment. Okay, the, they were, uh, the Moravian Church, they were of the very first Protestant groups in the world, originating from uh, the Bohemian Reformation, which is now the Czech Republic. Okay, they, they were fleeing religious persecution. They fled to Saxony in 1722, and some of them were given permission to settle in the land of a nobleman named Count Nicholas von Zindendorf, a Lutheran who had a large estate outside of a German city, Berth, Berthsdorf. All right, got to work on my German. The Moravian Protestants who settled there together with Zinzendorf established a church and named their settlement Hern Hut. It said it's called, which means the Lord's Watch. One characteristic of their new community was continuous prayer. Continuous prayer and done in the ships by different people. This continuous prayer, Hernhut, went on uninterrupted for a hundred years. Uninterrupted for a hundred years. What is practically, excuse me, what is particularly significant about the Moravian church at Hernhut is that they were a missionary church. They were the first large-scale Protestant missionary group and they were the pioneers of the modern missionary movement. During the 18th century alone, the Moravians established mission outposts in the Virgin Islands, Greenland, North America, South America, South Africa, and Labrador. Uh, their all-consuming purpose was to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth, a passion that was evident in their proportion of missionaries to lay people, by some estimates, a ratio of 1 to 60. Some of the very first Moravian missionaries went to the Caribbean island of St. Thomas. They went there in order to minister to the slaves on the island. It says, even selling themselves as slaves in order to give access. To get access, excuse me. I'm trying to find where it went. Okay, here it is. It's right in front of me. Thank you for your patience. It says, The Moravians had learned that the secret of loving the souls of men was found in loving the Savior of men. On October 8, 1732, a Dutch ship left the Copenhagen Harbor bound for the Danish West Indies. On board were the two first Moravian missionaries, John Leonard Dober, a potter, and David Nitschman, a carpenter. Both were skilled speakers and ready to sell themselves into slavery to reach the slaves of the West Indies. As the ship sailed, excuse me, as the ship slipped away, they lifted up a cry that would one day become the rallying call for all Moravian missionaries. So the ship is leaving, and they say, May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. The Moravians' passion for souls was surpassed only by their passion for the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. So they had a passion for Jesus, and their passion for Jesus led them to have a passion for souls and reaching the lost, and reaching their, the lost people groups, whether it's their place or literally, it says they went all over their known worlds. Praise the Lord. I'll share one more thing from uh, going on mission trips. I always find that the Lord really, even more so, I'll say, even more so, really empties me of myself, whether it's going to New Orleans or Africa or somewhere else. And, and uh, I, the Lord brings me to a place where just I'm completely empty. And uh, uh, I don't know if my wife knows this or not, but I'm literally prepared to die. I said, I don't know if I'm coming back, but I want to give my all. And in essence, I'm saying, in essence, I'm saying I want to give my all, no matter what this looks like. I want to be completely yielded to you, Lord. I want to, I want to uh, hear your voice. Uh, I, want, I, want to, I want to go all in. I want to go all in, Lord. I want to see people's lives changed. I want to see also the people on this trip. I want to see them take 
their faith and grow from leaps and bounds. I want to see uh, them grow in their faith. I want to see them grow, Lord Jesus. And uh, I, I'm prepared to, to deny myself and pick up the cross and go after the Lord. And uh, uh, whether it means uh, little sleep or not sure when you're eating or, or all those different things. I'm ready, I'm ready to fully give myself even more so up with what I'm saying. I'm saying it to another level is what I'm sharing. Another level of fully giving yourself, it says, to the work of the Lord. And, uh, and so I really believe that just having, a, as, as they said, a passion and a love for Jesus that he'll give you a burden and a passion for souls. And, and uh, whether it's to maybe lead a ministry uh, here in the city or to, or to go somewhere, uh, God will lead you. God will direct our steps. So praise the Lord. Father God, I thank you so much, Lord God, for sending your son. I believe Jesus was a missionary, Lord God. He left his comfort. He went out of his comfort zone of heaven and, and uh, his abode, Lord God, in, in the heavenlies. And he came down to earth. Lord Jesus, to uh, show us the way, Lord God. He walked in truth. He shared the gospel. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and uh, he didn't push anybody away, but he was ready. He preached to thousands, and he ministered one-on-one. -on -one. He ministered so many times to one-on-one. -on -one. Billy Graham, he once said, uh, given his life to preach to the, to the masses, that will not do it. But one-to-one -one witnessing, that is what will, what will win the loss. And so, Lord God, we thank you for your ultimate example, Jesus. We thank you that you uh, became a servant. You were willing to serve. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were uh, healing the sick. You were casting out devils. And that, Lord God, there was healing. There was rejoicing, Lord God. There's rejoicing. And, and I pray, Lord Jesus, as we're, we're here together this morning or, or whether we're going out throughout the weeks, Lord Jesus, that you would just give us uh, just an incredible passion for you, Jesus. It says to worship you with all of our heart all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. And then you're going to reveal to us, Lord God, what's on your heart. The people, Lord God, the nations, the individuals, the, maybe the target groups that you want us to target or, or seek after, Lord Jesus. And so I pray, Lord God, that we can be a church, a fellowship, a ministry, Lord Jesus, that, that, has, that, that we're, we're uh, sending people to the nations, that we're supporting people. We are supporting people that go. We also want to be a people that sends out, Lord God, we, that we're sending them out with purpose and power and intention and direction, Lord Jesus. And so I pray that you would just continue to um, fill us with your love, with your truth, Lord God, and, and we love you, we worship you.